Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress. The wait is over. As this video is published, Carlsen and Karana are getting ready for their pre-match press conference, which will be streamed live on Facebook. And on Friday, November 9th, they will play the first game of the match. On Chess to Impress, we've been counting down from 100 days to 1 by looking at the first 46 matches in the history of the official and undisputed world championships. This is the last video in that series. Only one more match we need to look at and that's Carlsen against Karyakin from two years ago. How did that match come about? The candidates tournament was again held as an eight player double round robin event in Moscow in Russia in March 2016. These were the eight players. Vishwanathan Anand qualified for the candidates because he was the runner up of the last world championship match where he lost to Carlsen. Topalov and Giri qualified on rating. Karana and Nakamura qualified through the Grand Prix tournament cycle and Karyakin and Svitler were the finalists of the recent World Cup. Levon Aronyan was the wild card given by the organizer. And Sergei Karyakin won the candidates tournament with 8.5 out of 14 games. There was a dramatic finish. Before the last round Karyakin and Karana were both on 7.5 out of 13 and they played each other in the last round. Karyakin was white and won and thus gained the right to challenge Magnus Carlsen for the world title. Anand came third. Anish Giri very famously made 14 draws out of 14 games and Veselin Topalov only a few years ago he was challenging for the title. He finished in bottom place. The match for the world championship was held in the Fulton Market Building in New York City in November 2016. 12 games as had been the norm in recent matches with a rapid and blitz tiebreak in case of a 6-6 score after the classical games. Sergei Karyakin earned the nickname of the Minister of Defense for his defensive heroics in some of the games. Here we see both players in action, world champion Carlsen on the right and his challenger Karyakin on the left. As you can see the first seven games were all drawn but then Karyakin took the lead with the black pieces in game 8. Game 9 was drawn and Carlsen won game 10. Game 11 and 12 were drawn again, so the score was 6 all and went into a tiebreak. The first two tiebreak games were drawn in the second tiebreak game. Karyakin again showed amazing defensive skills. In this video we're going to look at the third game of the tiebreak. Let's get into it. It was played on the 30th of November 2016, Magnus Carlsen's birthday. Karyakin was white, Carlsen was black. The game is analyzed by Anish Giri in the magazine New in Chess and I'm using his comments for this video. Karyakin opened e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and we saw the Rui Lopez. Bishop back, knight f6, Karyakin castled, bishop e7, d3, b5, bishop back again, d6, a3, Carlsen castled, Knight c3, knight a5, hitting the bishop on b3, bishop step back, and bishop e6. b4, and bishop takes a2 is the most common move here, but Carlsen played another move, he just retreated the knight. Knight d5, knight d4, and knight g5. Karyakin plays sharply, he could have swapped all the knights here. Giri calls it interesting and strategically very double-edged. Carlsen took on d5 and you have to be careful, you cannot take back with the bishop because then you lose a piece. Because of knight takes, e takes and the knight is hanging. Black wins a piece. Karyakin was not going to fall for that, he took back with the pawn and knight back to d7. This bishop is white's problem, it's a bad piece looking at its own pawn. Here knight h3 was suggested by Geary as it prevents f5. If black now plays f5 there is the move c3 and this knight has no squares. It's good for white. But after knight d7 Karyakin chose knight e4. And now f5 is possible, kicking the knight again. And here c3 is a move that Geary gives. This was the way to get a good position without any risk for white, says Geary. But Karyakin retreated the knight to d2. f4 from Carlsen, now c3, knight back to f5. Karyakin played the knight to e4. Giri says rook e1 is more flexible and stronger 
the knight want, might want to go to f3 instead. But knight e4 was played. Queen e8 from Carlsen. And from this moment on, black is in the driver's seat. Bishop b3. He wants to play the rook to a2. And a3, a4 is also a possible idea. Queen g6 from Carlsen. And f3. Giri says a necessary move, but creating weaknesses on e3 and g3. Carlsen is going on the attack. Bishop h4. a4. And knight f6, bringing all his pieces to the king side. Queen e2, to not allow the knight to jump into e3. And now a beautiful move from Carlsen, a5, using the whole board. Most people would focus on the king side attack. And Giri writes, mate on the king side was not easy to achieve for black, even though placing a knight or bishop on g3 seemed a tempting idea. Carlsen switches to positional play. Karyakin is on the edge of the cliff again. He had only 7 minutes left, while Carlsen still had 16. So you had to defend again, the Minister of Defense. He took on b5. Carlsen took on b4. And bishop d2. Protecting the rook on a1. Carlsen took on c3. Bishop takes. And now this knight has two beautiful squares on d4 and on e3. Carlsen went to e3, rook fc1, Carlsen swapped a pair of rooks and played queen e8. Switching the queen and putting Karyakin under pressure on both sides of the board. Giri writes very strong on top of other issues, White now also has to worry about the queen b8 to b6 maneuver. Karyakin played bishop c4, king h8, putting pressure on the d5 pawn now. And knight takes f6. It was hard to protect the d5 pawn. Karyakin only had 3 minutes here. Carlsen still had 10. Bishop takes f6. The safe way. G takes f6 instead would be the attacking way. Giri says that after bishop d2 then black would not checkmate white. After bishop takes f6 Carlsen sets up a pretty positional pawn sacrifice. Let's see what happens. Rook a3 from Karyakin. And there is that pawn sacrifice. e4. Karyakin took the pawn. Bishop takes. Rook takes. And now the queen has this beautiful square on e5. And he has a very beautiful knight. Versus a very poor bishop. That's the compensation for the pawn. Giri says this gorgeous position is not even objectively better for black. But this is one of those moments, as an annotator, that you have to overrule the engine's evaluation and claim that black is dominating. Objectively it's even, but it's much easier to play for black. Especially with very little time on the clock. Rook c1 from Karyakin, rook a8, and queen d2 was a strong move, says Geary, guarding the d4 square. White is still fighting then. After rook a8 he played h3. Karyakin did, Carlsen played h6, king h2, and queen d4. Magnus Carlsen said in a press conference after the game, the knight is very nice on e3, his king is unsafe, his bishop is bad, I had a few more minutes on the clock, there may be some configurations to hold, but in a practical game it's very easy to make a mistake. And here Karyakin played queen e1. Giri says this gives away more ground, and he gives e5, giving back the pawn as a better option. Queen takes and bishop d3. This was, a, this was a nice defensive idea, explains Giri. But queen e1 was played. Carlsen played queen b2 and it was Judith Polgar in the live broadcast when this game was played who said, Carlsen is winning this. Karyakin does not have a fortress kind of defense here. Bishop back to f1 from Karyakin, all his pieces on the back rank. Rook a2, doubling his heavy pieces on the second rank. And here, rook b1 is the only move, explains Geary. Then Carlsen continues with queen f6. And this is very hard to defend, especially with only seconds on the clock. But after rook a2, Karyakin cracked. He took on c7. 
Here he says, a rare occurrence, Karyakin just collapses. Because after rook a1, Karyakin had to resign this game. His queen is attacked, his bishop is attacked twice. Let's look at the variation. You can play queen e2, but it doesn't work. Knight takes f1 check, king h1 only move, knight g3 check, and checkmate on the next move. A big win for Carlsen with the black pieces in game 3 of the tiebreak. He was now 2 points to 1 up with only one game to go. So Karyakin had to win the last game with the black pieces to send the match into a blitz tiebreak. And this is his position in the fourth game of the rapid tiebreak. White Carlsen, black Karyakin. White is an exchange up, but he's almost checkmated. Queen g2 is a checkmate threat, but White has a mating attack himself. Carlsen took some time to calculate and then played rook c8 check, burning all the bridges behind him, but he saw it was a forced checkmate. If Karyakin had interposed the bishop, then there is rook takes, king takes, rook takes f7 check, king e8, another check, king d7, a check with the queen, king c6, it leads to a forced checkmate, king b7, queen d7 check, the king can only go to a6, and this is checkmate. Chasing the king all the way from g8 to a6. Karyakin did not go for that. He played king h7, and now we saw a really gorgeous way to finish the match. Carlsen played queen h6 check here, and Karyakin immediately resigned. Not only a gorgeous queen sacrifice, but also the only move that wins. As said, Carlsen had burned the bridges behind him, but his mating attack worked. If you take the queen, then rook takes f7 is checkmate. And if you take the queen with the king, then rook h8 is checkmate. A beautiful checkmate motif. And a lot more was to be said about Carlsen's queen sacrifice. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So after 12 regular games and 4 tiebreak games, Magnus Carlsen retained his world title, winning the match 9 points to 7. I made a total of 4 videos on that gorgeous queen sacrifice. Video number 107 on the Chess to Impress channel is about the Carlsen Kayakin tiebreak, which was posted on the day that the tiebreak was held. Then in Tata Steel 2017, that checkmating motif appeared in the game between Carlsen and Geary. Carlsen missed it there, only a couple of months after he did see it in the final tiebreak game of the World Championship match. In video number 154, I show that Carlsen's move had been anticipated. And video number 172 also shows a position where Carlsen's miracle move had been anticipated, had been played before. I put the links to these four videos in the description box of this video. Hope you'll have a look. This is the logo from the World Chess website. It's not free to follow the games there, but I've paid the fee and will follow the World Championship games there as well as on other websites. And a few hours after every game, I will post a video on the Chess to Impress YouTube channel with analysis of each game. I hope you enjoyed this series building up to the Carlsen Caravana match, counting down from 100 days to 1. It was a lot of fun to make this series, researching those old games and making videos on it. I hope you will follow the Carlsen Carana match with me on Chess to Impress. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you like the video, if you like this series, please share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. The link to the series is here. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.